Get ready for the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. All right, it's time for the Voodoo Chef Podcast, where we will discuss all things voodoo from the Voodoo Studios located right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. So to all my booties out there, if you're looking for nothing but a good time, this is the place to be. Call your friends, knock on the neighbor's door, and let them know it's time to party like a rock star for the next hour. Join me and my guests and learn to voodoo like we do as we discuss our faves and the voodoo that we use. I'll put our guests on the spot as we ask for their top three and make sure and listen as we discuss some of our favorite war stories from the kitchens we've worked in. Sit back, grab a tall glass of your favorite libation, and enjoy this episode of the Voodoo Chef Podcast. What's going on, booties? I'm flying solo tonight, but that's A-OK. Big Eddie C got called into work. You know, when you're, you know, we know Bill Workman, professional educator of an A school. We know he's a rock star. But I've told you many times, Big Eddie C, he's a super educator. And he got called in tonight. So we're flying solo. All good. It's going to be a great episode. Uh, Got to tell you, uh, Full Moon Market coming up on March 20. 7th, March 27th. I think that's this Saturday. So this drops on Friday, the next day, tomorrow, tomorrow, unless you're watching this on Sunday, then it was yesterday. But on March 27th, I am going to be at Dark Door Spirits. They're doing a full moon market. It is my first market out since COVID. Come out, grab all your voodoo needs, hang out, chit chat, talk, uh, you know, maybe buy me an old fashioned or two, or five, who knows, uh, just come out, let's have a good time, three to seven, Dark Door Spirits, uh, all the information's on uh, their homepage, we'll try to remember to put it out, but we both know I'm not going to remember to put it out, come out, Dark Door Spirits, Full Moon Market, grab all your voodoo supplies, all right, man, uh, let's jump right into the halfway hangout, this week I made a Texas slider, which means it's the biggest little slider you're going to see this side of Texas. Uh, we took a 80-20 ground beef, seasoned it up with Voodoo Red, threw that on the green egg, topped it with a portobello stuffed with our house pimento cheese, LTO, a uh, little bread and butter pickle, got a craving for that bread and butter pickle, all on a King's Hawaiian roll with a little bit of smokehouse barbecue sauce. Check it out. What's going on, Buddhists? Already got stuff, got to come off the grill. All right, if you're watching... So you know, any of the comments, they've all got to come through the at Eric Young's page. So let's make that happen today. Um, hopefully I'll be able to see them. Who knows? Who knows? Technology. You know, what can we do, right? So all the comments got to come through at Eric Young's 13. So if you're watching on one page, the other page, make sure you jump over at Eric Young's 13 on Facebook. That way I can see the, the comments here. All right, stuff's already got to come off the grill. Holy moly. I am wishing you guys don't get to see me in a minute. All right, so we got to head start here, guys. Whoa. If you were checking out some of the posts, pre-game here. Shit, that was up, Martin. If you were checking out some of the posts pre-game, you know we got a little something, something already on the grill. So, we got a little pimento stuff, baby bell. And it's got the voodoo pimento. If this was one of my kids, I'd be yelling at him. Proper tool, proper job, proper tool, proper job. Holy moly. Alright, I don't know if you can see over here on the side. We got some stuff, stuff heavy going too. Those are for me. Alright, let's put this stuff back. I'm already gonna come around and show you what we got going on. So 
We were pre-gaming, guys. We took the Bella, baby Bellas. <clears throat> we stuffed them with the Voodoo, Voodoo Chef uh, pimento cheese, and we threw them on the green egg. <clears throat> they sat on the green egg 350 for about 35 minutes. I'm gonna tell you, they went maybe 10 minutes too long. 10 minutes too long. We're gonna set these right here. We got a lot to do. I appreciate everybody popping in. As always, as always, don't forget to throw the hearts, throw the likes, throw the shares, do the ads, slashes, whatever you do. Uh, I am gonna be watching the monitor here for comments. If you are going to comment and post, uh, you're gonna have to go over to at Eric Young's 13. So if you're on Facebook, switch over to at Eric Young's 13 uh, so that we can get your comments. Tell us where you're checking in from. I see Carl checking in. Carl, where are you checking in from? Uh, what are you cooking tonight? And again, I was cussing you because you're the reason I'm making stuffed mushrooms. All right, time to get busy here though. We gotta, we gotta get going because I don't know if you noticed, I got a little ice cream out here today. And uh, thank God uh, the weather's starting to break. Texas, I was checking in. <coughs> uh, got family out there. They got water. They got gas. And I hope, I'm hoping that's the case for everybody. Uh, they lifted the boil notice. Thank God. Uh, Iowa, got family up there in the Midwest. Uh, four foot snow, bank, snow banks on their driveway. I think uh, that's starting to subside. All right, we got to get busy, guys. Enough about that. It's hot here. Ice cream's melting. All right, what do I got? I got some pineapple slices. Real easy. We're just going to take these pineapple slices. We're going to hit them with bread. Hit them with bread. And uh, we're just going to get a little grill on them. Got to open my grill up. I do have the deflector plate in today, the configurator, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to get a little garlic butter here. Just get this right on my grill grease. I'm going to throw this pineapple in here get this going. We want to get some grill marks on here. Get a little bit of that Voodoo Red flavor on there. Uh, Voodoo Red is our, our little Southwest seasoning. It's got that Tex-Mex, that Tejas, that chili, that taco. Uh, we also have that on top of our mushrooms here. And uh, it's going to be a red kind of night. We're going to be putting it on just about everything. Right now, during pandemic, red comes in a pouch. It's a five ounce pouch. Uh, same amount that comes in a bottle. My wife looked at this and goes, you get all that in a bottle? Well, yeah, I guess we do. Um, but uh, it's in a pouch right now. We had a little problem with the supply chain. We didn't want to not have red. So we went ahead and uh, had it put in bags so that we could have it available for everybody. So, Carl, what's going on? It's Wednesday, man. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Uh, drinking a little water tonight to talk today. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be cooking with a little bit of... Uh, I get picked on when I say jaritos. I get picked on when I say jaritos. So uh, we're going to say pineapple soda. I got a little pineapple soda. I've been working on a project. And I was trying to create something new, something fun, something uh, maybe a little trendy, something people could have fun with. And uh, the old traditional root beer float or coke float just wasn't hitting it for me. Um, these things, jarritos, have become real hip and trendy lately. It's a real good, this, this is a real good soda. I don't know if you've had it. Um, I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything. I picked it up, I tried it, and I liked it. So I decided we were gonna have a little fun with it. So, our pineapples are, are doing their magic here. I am gonna just give a little flip. We're gonna season the other side. And we just want to get this grill flavor on here. Why am I jumping back and forth? Pineapple, jarrito, pineapple, jarrito, pineapple, jarrito. Oh, you're going to find out in a minute. If you notice, I got my trusty glass here. And uh, we're just going to take this. It's got two big scoops of ice cream in it. It's about, uh, about a four-ounce scoop. And we're just going to cover this with the pineapple soda. And you just look at it doing its magic. Look at the, the head this is forming, almost like it was a beer. Um, so we're going to fill this all the way to the top. Guys, this is probably the easiest drink that we're going to be making out here. Um, we take our, our straw, we're going to set that in. We're going to drop our big spoon right in there too. 
Gonna get a little bit tougher on here. Now here's the yummy. We got our pineapple soda. We're just gonna take our pineapple here and garnish the side of this thing. I got a little cut in there, it's not magic. It's not magic, it's red. See what I did there? Um, and we got a little new version of an old classic. So we got a little bit of a Coke float happening right here. Flame Boss is going nuts because I keep opening and closing the lid. They'll get over it. Um, I do have my Flame Boss hooked up. But uh, check this out, guys. So we got a nice little Sunday barbecue treat. A little pineapple float uh, made with Jarrito Soda, a Voodoo Chef red pineapple, which when you mix it in with the Jarrito Soda and eat it with the ice cream, the combination of that Voodoo Chef Red and the sugars is going to create a kind of a barbecue-y flavor for you. So you're gonna have like a pineapple barbecue float. Now, I'd love to sit here and eat this, but they tell me I gotta cook. I mean, this is a halfway hangout. So I'm gonna set this over here and uh, hopefully the girls will come in and get it. And uh, they'll drink that and enjoy that. But. Uh, if you're just checking in, I saw Sean just check in. Um, if you're on the uh, Eric Young's Facebook page, jump over to Eric Young's 13 so we can read your comments. Uh, it's a quick change, just go to the search bar, type in Eric Young's 13. Uh, I think you'll see a picture of me stabbing a hamburger with a fork or a knife or something. Just click over to that page. That way we can read your comments right here on the monitor and we can uh, all play together. All right. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't want to try one of these bad boys. Alright, so I've got my baby Bella. I dropped a little bit of smokehouse barbecue in there, filled it with voodoo pimento cheese, and topped it with bread. Hmm. We can stop the show right now. We can stop the show right now. That's the goods. Not done. We got more stuff to do. All right, so today we're gonna make a little bit of a voodoo slider. And we're gonna call this the Big Texas Slider. And it's kind of a little bit of irony there because Texas, everything's big, right? But sliders are traditionally small. We're gonna take our buns, hit them with a little of the garlic butter, voodoo garlic butter. Uh, you can use whatever you want. Uh, if you don't want to whip your own butter, there's, there's some decent spreads out there. I mean, nothing's better than butter. We know butter is one of the four, one of the five food groups. And uh, we'd be more than happy to share the Voodoo garlic butter recipe with you. Just hit us up. I know, big boy, why don't you start putting these recipes on Facebook? Put them on the website. You know, from uh, Halfway Hangout, we jump right over in a recording podcast, and I don't know if you guys knew it, but during the day, I hang out at this place called Urban Technical College, where I uh, kind of head up the culinary program out there, and, uh, you know, got to hang out out there, so time kind of tends, not to mention consult with the restaurants and doing all that other fun stuff, time just kind of tends to find itself slipping through our fingers. Um, we come out here, we cook dinner every week. Uh, if you want the recipe, hit me up. We'll make sure you get it. Uh, Sean, I'm glad you found it, man. All right, we got to get our jalapeno poppers flipping. While we're doing this, you know, I'm a trained professional. I'll try this at home. Use the tools. Don't stick your hand in the grill. Um, I do want to give a shout out to my man, Carl. Uh, Carl Miller, Silver and Smoke Barbecue. You can find them at the Silver, Silver and Smoke of 11. Um, make sure you check him out, like his page, give him, a, give him a follow. You know, I love when I run into people and they say, hey man, I really like your products. Uh, they really excite me and I want to thank you. 
uh, it kind of inspired me a little bit. It's always, you know, we want fuzzies. And, uh, and that's nice that when people say that. But it's even more exciting when we have people who say that to us and they inspire us as much as we inspire them. Uh, these mushrooms that I created are a little twist on a version that Carl did um, when he was cooking. And uh, another uh, another thing I got going is my, my jalapenos. Um, again, Carl made some jalapeno poppers and just made me have to have them. I don't know if you guys can see the flames popping here. My flame boss is getting mad at me because uh, I got the lid open. So if you remember a couple weeks ago, we kind of tricked the flame boss into heating our grill up so we could get that reverse sear going. Well, we're tricking the hell out of it right now because she's doing a number on me. All right, so let's get these off. All right, while we move these off, I gotta get, we're gonna let this set, we're gonna start building this in a second, but if we don't get the burgers on, we're gonna be in trouble. All right, we told you, everything with bread. <laughs> you, got, you got tough hands, but chicks dig that. Uh, that's a good one there, Sean. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how many chicks are digging on this thing, but uh, as long as one does, that's all that matters, and she's in the house right now, so. Um, all right, so look, guys, I'm putting Voodoo Red on here pretty liberally. I don't know if you can see it from there. I got my dimple inside my burger. These are about two-ounce patties, um, and we're just sliding them right on here. Again, I do have my con convector plate on. I don't know if that's what they call it. That's what I call it. Um, and I'm just dropping these in Voodoo Chef red side down. And I'm putting the red side down uh, because I'm going to season the other side once I get these in here. You know, if you want to send me little messages and go, hey, why didn't you season them before, the other side before they went, I don't know. I don't know, because I'm doing it this way. No right or wrong, man. Let's get this in here. Now we're going to close this bad boy up. All right, let's get a little wipey wipe. Now. All right. My, the flame boss. I gotta tell you, one of my favorite, favorite new, to new toys, the Flame Boss, we hook it right up to the uh, bottom baffle of the green egg, and it has a little fan. It's controlled to a, a little digital readout here that talks to my phone, and that's why I keep seeing pop-ups on my phone about Flame Boss is pissed at you because you got the lid open. Um, but what it does is it regulates the air going into the bottom baffle. And we keep this one almost closed to help the flame boss do all the work. And you set it to the temperature you want. So we set it at 350 for the mushrooms. And I gotta tell you, I was inside doing all my mise en place for everything else while the mushrooms were here doing their thing. Didn't even have to worry about it. If the, the green egg got too hot, my phone beeps and lets me know something's going, going around. So pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I love it. I don't know why I never had it before, but a uh, big shout out to my my guys over at Flame Boss. Check them out on the Voodoo Chef podcast. They were our guests last week, and you can find that at youtube.com forward slash Voodoo Chef. Hit us on the Voodoo Chef channel. Make sure you ring the bell. Carl, thanks for love. Just showcasing Voodoo products. Man, you're showcasing more than Voodoo products, brother. All right, so look, we got a nice little garlic butter on our slider buns. Now, uh, there was a big discussion what we were going to put this burger on. And when I say big discussion, you know, we talk to a lot of people. I, we get a lot of input. Uh, you know the end input is what tastes good, what you like, and how you're going to uh, enjoy this with you and your family. But when we start talking about these, these things and creating them, you know, I got a team of people. We all know my, my P-I-C-H. Uh, don't know. Robert Haggerty, what's up, man? How you doing, neighbor? Uh, my main man, H, uh, you know, we don't go anywhere without him. He, uh, he and I talk about this ad nauseum, trying to figure out, hey, what am I going to put this burger on? What am I going to put this slider on? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, and then, you know, of course, my new buddy, not new buddy, my old new buddy, uh, Mike, he's like, let's try it. Dude, do an English muffin. I'm like, no, no English muffin for me. Uh, Which eggs, Benedict, by the way, one of my favorite dishes. Uh, if you ever want me to come over for eggs benedict just give me a call i'm in um what i finally went with after you know the big loop of discussion 
I came back to the King's Hawaiian Roll. Simple, easy, it's gonna have a little bit of that sweet texture, and uh, the original King's Hawaiian Roll is a perfect size for our slider, even though we're making the big Texas slider, whatever the hell I call it. I don't even remember, but it's ironic that we're doing sliders with Texas once again. All right, guys, as always, we're gonna put our LTO, we're gonna put our lettuce on the base here. Uh, the lettuce, you gotta have something on the base of your burger so that the bun does not mush out and dry out and get, or get soggy, rather. So we wanna keep it dry. Uh, you can use, I use leaf lettuce, I tend to use leaf lettuce a lot. Um, you can also use a fat. So if you want to put a layer of mayonnaise down here, that would perfectly work the same way. Uh, that mayonnaise is going to act as a barrier between that uh, burger we're going to put on here and the uh, bun. And again, uh, you know, judging burgers for the uh, Burger Showdown, Best Burger in Tampa Bay, which I was honored to do. I, I miss it. We need to start doing that again. Um, you know, when writing the rubric, you start thinking about what makes the best burger. And you know, it all starts with the bun. It all starts with the bun. Whether it's a slider or a full-scale burger, if that burger is not going to support that patty, that burger, it, it's just a waste. It's just a waste. I, I say all the time, I love the burger that's dripping down my arm that's just like ooey gooey. But I still want to be able to hold it inside that bun. That bun is the vessel that's helping me carry that burger. Let's make sure it's not breaking on the bottom. Let's make sure it's holding true. Help us do that. A nice piece of leaf lettuce, a little bit of uh, fat, either one will work. All right, LTO guys. Um, I like onion. I like onions. So we're going to put a lot of onions on these bad boys and I'm using red onions you can use whatever you want uh, you know white onions gonna have a little bit more harder hit of the acid a lot of people ask me why I use the red onion all the time uh, the color the color brings a nice little contrast to what we're cooking it shows well and so uh, it, it plays nice and it looks good on our burgers I don't like those pieces Peter to pay so. Now, if you're sitting there wondering why did he not use those pieces, well, you know, they're a little bigger than the bread. And I want everything to be contained inside my bun. I want to be able to pick this up and have a burger that I could enjoy. We're going to check our burgers real quick. Always burp your grill. Make sure that that bad boy is not going to uh, spit fire at you. Different uh, story. All right, guys. Roma tomatoes. Again, another one of my go-tos. I'm gonna put romas on every other one, and you're out there going, "Dude, why every other one?" Um, my girls don't always like the tomatoes, so we're just gonna slide it up. And again, you do you. This is there's no rocket. This isn't rocket science. There's no rule book. You make this how you want to make it. That's what makes cooking so fun. I like this, this is what I put on. I don't like this, it ain't going on. Very, you ain't gonna see no olives out here, guys. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, everybody on Voodoo Chef, I keep saying this, uh, if you're on the Voodoo Chef Facebook page, go over to at Eric Young's 13. Make sure you hit that, that heart, that share, that follow, whatever you do. Uh, that's where all the comments are coming up. Let us know where you're checking in from. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, by all means, post some comments up there. Uh, Robert, what's going on, man? Weren't you just like overseas or something? Or was that a while ago? Is that an old Facebook post? Uh, if, you, uh, if you're in the area this week, um, don't know if you guys are familiar with Dark Door Spirits. Dark Door Spirits, uh, Dark Door Distillery, Dark Door Spirits, whichever. They make some good stuff, that I'll tell you. Uh, it's located in the warehouse district over off of Anderson Road. Um, Dark Door is kind of apropos, guys, because it's, it's back there.
But uh, we're going to be there this week, uh, Saturday, from 3 to 7. Voodoo Chef's going to be at Dark Door Distillery. Uh, they have a full moon market. And so we're going to be out there with all the voodoo products. People ask me all the time, where can you get them? Well, guess what? You can get them at Dark Door Distillery this Saturday from 3 to 7. I will personally be there. Uh, I'll be able to answer any questions you have, tell you about the products. You can ask me how we use them, what to do with them. You can uh, just hang out. And uh, it's going to be a good time. I think you'll be able to get off of the jalapenos got to come off. You'll be able to uh, get tours of the distillery. You'll be able to, I believe, sample some of the products. Oh, it's a tube. Wow. We got money happening here. You'll be able to sample some of the uh, products from the distillery that they made right there and just uh, have a good time. I am not the only vendor in the house, so there will be plenty of other things to do, see, hang out. You know, I'm a tongue guy. This voodoo red on here, and it's, 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 it's so super yummy. While I got the lid open, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little garlic butter on them. Uh, moisten these things up with some butter. Sean, what's your favorite thing to cook with uh, voodoo if you're still out there? What you do last? Are you a green egg or what kind of grill you got? Give us some insight. All right. Those things are rocking. Let's clean up a little bit because we got to get ready. But once these things are done, money, money, money. All right, guys. If you haven't been to the Voodoo channel on YouTube, check it out. Uh, tonight, real cool podcast. We're going to be stalking. We're going to be stalking. We're going to be talking with a culinary specialist from the United States Coast Guard. Um, he's going to tell us all about opportunities for folks out there uh, interested in culinary that they can hit up through the United States Coast Guard. And uh, we're just going to give him a lot of thanks and gratitude for doing what he does uh, for all the armed service workers, man. Uh, they go above and beyond so that we can stand out here on our back patios, uh, grilling like we do, hanging out like we do. So uh, make sure you tune in check that out. As always, what pointless pop culture trivia if you ever want to join us for that it's a simple email hit me up tell me to add you to our trivia list and you can join pointless pop culture trivia every wednesday night at 8 45 uh we record it and it goes into our podcast that uh, drops every friday so uh good times good times uh behind the 27 uh at dark door spirits uh it's looking like we might be at dark door spirits spirits again on April 26th. If we're at Dark Door on April 26th, you're going to have the rare opportunity to come out and uh, grab some voodoo food. So uh, we're probably going to have the gastro pig out there, the voodoo chicken tacos. Uh, I don't know what else. We might have the, the bubble creams out there. Just kind of piecing that together now as we go. So uh, just something to think about. That's uh, this Saturday, March 27th, and then Monday, April 26th. Uh, at Dark Door. We are also doing a uh, an event that we call Our Hope. If you're not familiar with the Voodoo Chef and the Voodoo Chef Foundation, uh, one of the pillars we stand on is that it's our hope that no one goes without. So what we do is we jump into schools and we try to take care and feed some of these students out there uh, that, that might not have the opportunity to eat some of the foods that we do, that we throw down, have the opportunity to run out and enjoy a food truck. Um, just uh, do a little give back. On March 12th, we are taking over Robinson High School, and we are going to be uh, hanging out. We've got Alfred's food truck coming. We've got, let me see if I can hit everybody here, because, you know, I don't want to piss anybody off. Alfred's food truck's coming to join us that day. We've got, uh, man, my boys from Wicked Oak coming out. And Silver and Smoke, Carl's going to be out there. Catering by the family is going to be out there. See, I already, I already forgot everybody else. Forgot them. 
I'm horrible. I'm a horrible, horrible man. But uh, hit our Facebook page because they're all on there. They're all going to be featured on there. And we're going to be posting while we're out there. Live, live cuts. Uh, we're going to be feeding, I think, oh, Faux Cheesy's coming. Faux Cheesy food truck. Rock stars of a food truck. Kicking Caribbean. My girl Carrie Small uh, coming out with her truck. Making some amazing chicken burritos. I can't wait to show it. I always eat the her truck. And I eat the cheese. The grilled cheese. Truck. And I eat the Albert's. We're going to feed, looking like about 800 kids, so uh, it's going to be a great day. Can't wait to get out there, can't wait to uh, make a difference in the community. If you want to be part of that, hit us up. Hit us up. We need volunteers, we need people, we need all kinds of stuff. All right, I'm ready to, I'm ready to eat. I can't wait. Eat my pickles. All right, guys, here's what we're doing. Voodoo Smokehouse. Uh, if you're not familiar with Voodoo Smokehouse, i got to hit some buttons over here. If you're not familiar with Voodoo Smokehouse, it is our Kansas City-style barbecue sauce. Uh, if you are watching on Eric Young's, this camera right here, do me a favor. Go over and like Eric Young's 13 on Facebook, at Eric Young's 13. Hit it up. Uh, go over there. That's where we're dropping comments. And uh, we'd love to see you over there. We'd love to see your comments, and we'd love to talk to you. We're getting ready to drop these burgers. Uh, this is Booty Chef Smokehouse. This one in the Portobello. It's our Kansas City South Kansas City South barbecue sauce. This is one of our number one products, and we've been out of this since March. I don't know if you remember what happened back in March. This little thing called the pandemic, and uh, we've been out of this product since then. So. We've had difficulty getting the bottles, and then we had problems with other parts of the supply chain. This is in production right now. So we're getting ready to start bringing this back, and that's why we're cooking with it today. So in the bellows, we put a little drop, about a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons of smokehouse in the bottom of each bellow. Now, when I do my portobellas, I do clean out all the fins. So we flip them upside down, I use a spoon. I scrape out all the fins. We put a little bit of the Voodoo Chef Smokehouse in there, and then we fill it with the pimento cheese. I'm telling you, I've already eaten one. I'm probably going to eat another one here in a minute. These things are amazing. Uh, we're also going to put this on top of our burgers once they hit our bread. Our bread, what we're working, if you miss it, we've got the King's Hawaiian Roll. We hit it with a little Voodoo Chef garlic butter. Again, if you want, hit us up, ask us for the recipe. Too easy. We've got lettuce on the bottom with our onion and tomato. Only tomato on some of them because inside girls don't always like the tomato, so they don't want the tomato. They don't have to have it. Um, and again, the lettuce is there to help that fat protect that bun. We don't want that bun having the fat drip in. Uh, if you missed it, go back and check it out. We made some bubble creams, a uh, little twisted version of the uh, traditional float. We did that at the beginning with a little vanilla ice cream, a little harito soda, and a Voodoo Chef Red Grill Pineapple. And we're, gonna, we're just getting ready to finish these bad boys off. Uh, perfect Grill. Oh. Do you smell? These things look good. Oh. If you've never had a burger, on the green egg, you're missing out. If you've never had food off the green egg, you're missing out because the, uh, guys, I'm a tongs guy. I'm gonna quit playing around with this spatula. When I worked in industry, I always used tongs. The only time I'd use my uh, spatula is if I you know, had a delicate piece of fish or something. We'd use our fish spat to make sure and take care of the fish. But uh, these burgers, these look super duper. I'm going to give them just a couple minutes while we just kind of chat and wrap up here. If you have not had food off the green egg, get out, try it on for size. Uh, find somebody who's got one, have them cook for you. Make sure they know what they're doing. The food just stays so moist, stays so amazingly well. The flavors of the product are incredible. My flame boss is yelling at me over there. Um, it's an amazing product, and, and you know, I used to 
laugh at the green egg and see that big green thing. But I'm telling you, man, I'm an addict. I'm an addict. I'm out here every week. Uh, I got my Weber over here. I don't. I can't tell you the last time I turned it on. And uh, you know, I'm a gas guy. I love my gas grills. Uh, my Blackstone turned it on. Uh, we used it for an event. We made smash burgers and we we killed it. And uh, it's been sitting ever since. I keep coming back here, throwing the charcoal in the green egg, firing it up. I got my Fogo in there, and uh, I couldn't be more happy. So if you if you try one on for size, uh, I think you're gonna I think you're gonna like it. All right, I'm ready to, to, to cook these bad boys, but I don't want to get yelled at anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug my Flame Boss, and that way I don't get yelled at up on my screen. Uh, guys, hit us up. Let us know where you're checking in from. All right, here we go. Where my grill? Look at this. All right, guys, real simple. Juiciest burger you're ever going to have. Our Texas Sliders. The biggest little burger there is. Wowzers. Danny boy, how you been, buddy? We need to uh, we need to grab a coffee or something. It's been too long. Way too long. here hey just like just like the tomatoes some of the, the sometimes the girls don't like you know the mushrooms and the stuff I do that's okay we just won't put mushrooms on all of them but we are gonna get them and I'm using I don't know please don't email me or text me or write in the little box there why aren't you using your fat boy pickles that you talk about so much I, I wanted a bread and butter pickle tonight man. so when I was at the market I grab some bread and butter pickles. Oh, snap. Snap, snap, snap. I forgot. I need a little drop of smokehouse. Now, why didn't you put it on, baste it while it was on the grill? Well, I want it like ketchup. I want to use it like a condiment tonight. And again, there's no rhyme or reason. You do you. And it's not taking a lot here. I just want that barbecue-y flavor. I'm not putting it on here to moisten up my burger. Because I'm going to tell you, these burgers are going to be moist enough as it is. So I'm just putting a little drop on top of each one. And then we're going to lock these things into place. Shed away and move on. So I never felt. The biggest little burger you can find. Guys, don't forget, we talked about, you know, we got our hope, we've got the full moon market, we've also got the our hope if you want to be part and help out with that. We also have a podcast on our YouTube channel. Make sure you throw likes and shares to all our friends out there. Uh, whether it's Wicked, 
Wicked Oak, Silver and Smoke, Jazzy's, uh, Alfred's Food Truck, Kicking Caribbean, Faux Cheesy. We also, uh, guys, I'm looking at these burgers. I'm losing my train of thought. They look so damn good. Um, we also, right around the corner, high school recipe competition. Uh, thanks to our friends over at Kaiser University. We've got Voodoo Chef Underground looking for a sponsor right now as we speak. If you're interested, you want to get involved, uh, you're interested in sponsoring, helping us send kids to school, hit us up, let us know. Uh, we need to get as many people as we can in on this. We're going to put this right here. And guys, I gotta tell you, I'd love to sit here and chat. I would love to sit here and chat. But this is happening like right now. This is happening. Don Davenport, thanks for checking in. Every Dean Zimmer from Erie PA, what's going on? Guys, just so you know, Make sure you're always, always, always checking us out at Eric Young's 13. If you're not following that page, follow it now. Click on Facebook at Eric Young's 13. Like, follow. You'll get the notifications. All the lives are going over to that page. Uh, you're going to find them there exclusively real soon. And uh, thanks for checking out the Halfway Hangout. Oh, welcome back, guys. Tell me that did not look phenomenal. And I tell you... It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. The uh, stuffed jalapeno poppers, I don't know. We didn't talk about that on the front end. But let me tell you, they were amazing. They were almost as amazing as tonight's guest. And tonight's guest is a very special guest. Uh, he is a member of the United States Coast Guard. And, uh, you know, Voodoo Chef, we, we're supporting that military. Uh, all branches, just phenomenal, phenomenal thing that they're doing. We talk about it all the time. Thank you for doing what you do so we could sit around and do what we do, whether it's barbecuing in the back patio for the Wednesday halfway hangout, sitting in here doing the podcast, or, or you know, just just to hanging out at Gasparilla, going to a concert, whatever it is. We couldn't do it without uh, the fine military folk. And uh, bringing in right now, we've got Chief Rub. Of Chef Rub, man, we got you in the room. What's going on, partner? How you doing? What's up going on, Chef? Good. Man, Everything's great. I'm living the dream, man, but not like you, man. I'm living the dream because of you, and I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I appreciate that as well. Well, what's the dream? What kind of good dream are you living? Oh, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's Wednesday night. We record the podcast on Wednesday nights, and uh, I get to talk to amazing people like yourself. Uh, we just got done with a halfway hangout. I know you couldn't see the video because you were in the waiting room, but, man, we made some amazing sliders tonight. Uh, we made a little bubble cream, a little vanilla ice cream with pineapple soda, a grilled barbecue pineapple for garnish. Uh, you know, that, that's my dream on Wednesday night. And then, of course, a little bit later, a little pointless pop culture trivia. <laughs> and you know the best yeah, part about it? I'm it's, probably going to lose. No, it, it, it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a nice hangout. I like this hangout. The Voodoo, uh, as I say, voodoo, the Voodoo Lounge. Voodoo, oh, studios. voodoo Studios. Voodoo yeah. Studios, man. This is, where, this is where we come to relieve stress. We've got the guitars. We've got the bar. Play those? Uh, yeah, we play them, man. Well, nice. We come in here and we turn up really loud. Here, I'll do something I don't normally do. but. Uh... Oh, wow. There you go. You know the only thing that, that wall's missing? It's a Coast Guard stripe. Hey, let's get it on there. Right there. Put one of those on there. We'll be good to go. Ah, dude, we'll get it. You get me a Coast Guard <laughs> stripe guitar, I'll put the Voodoo logo on it, and we'll be rocking that out every week. There, there we go. Hey, let's, um, let, let's talk about your Voodoo career, your, your Voodoo career, your Coast Guard career, man, because, uh, you know, I'm a big, big proponent of the military, and I, I just absolutely – appreciate uh the men and women who go fight for us i don't know if you saw my email today what i really call you guys um you guys you guys are badasses there's no other way to put it um you guys put your life on the line in every every aspect so that 
uh, you know, we can, we can do the things we want to do. And those who think uh, freedom's free, it's not. It, freedom is because of people like you. So uh, I'm very interested to learn all about uh, your job because you're not just a coastie. You're a chef, man. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. So uh, you and I met through some mutual chef buddies. And I'm super stoked. You know, you came out, you made some opportunities available to the, the, the students down at Irwin. But I'm just so intrigued about the life of a, 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 chef, a chef in the Coast Guard. You know, I know Navy chefs. I know Army chefs. Uh, you're actually the first Coast Guard chef I've met. So um, yeah, let's, start, let's start from scratch. Uh, when did you enter the Coast Guard? So I got back. I, I joined up. Uh, when I finally realized I needed to do something with my life back in 2005. <laughs> 2005. Now, now, were you right out of high school? Did you take some time off? No, nope. uh, I actually graduated on a Tuesday and I was gone the next Tuesday. Wow. wow. I, shaved my head, I shaved my head on a Thursday and, and mama started crying and that, she knew it was coming. So that was it. And I was in Cape May, New Jersey a week after I walked the stage. So Cape May, New Jersey. Is that where uh, basic is? Yep. That's where we go. Uh, have fun for eight months. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, eight weeks, not eight months. Oh, wow. I was going to say that's amazing. <laughs> it's a resort crazy. after that. It's, it's definitely a resort town. It's so, so Cape Maine, uh, you definitely, if you're a Floridian, you definitely want to make sure you, you sign up and go to boot camp during summer, right? Oh, yeah. That's the good times. <laughs> Just as hot as Florida. Just as hot. The seagulls are about four times as big, though. Holy cow. Uh, what is what's basic like for uh, for the Coast Guard? I mean, it's eight weeks. That's the shortest of all the branches. It is. It's only eight weeks. Um, I don't say it's going to be the easiest thing you ever walked. Obviously, it's the probably the biggest challenge you'll ever face. Absolutely. But the cool thing about it is, is if you guys that you know go towards that goal and that dream, it's it's a hundred percent doable. It taps into potential that people don't realize they don't even have. And then at the end of the day, they come out and they're they, they're not even a better person, but they are just so capable of doing things they don't even know they can do anymore um, before they walk through that program. So, and the, and the instructors there, they're all enlisted. So they've all gone through the program, just like the, uh, the people going through. So they know the struggles. It's not a mystery. Um, there's no smoke and mirrors, I call it, or riding unicorns or firing, shooting fireballs from my fingertips on Tuesday. You know what I mean? It's the real thing. <laughs> We get it. We get into it. So uh, and you can be fully prepared before you leave. You know, that's that's what my job is, is as your, you know, career counselor, I like to call it because, you know, recruiters sometimes gets that negative undertones. Um, <laughs> so I like to say career counselor or, uh, you know, coasty, whatever. Everybody doesn't get mad when they say hey, it's coasty, whatever. Make fun of that guy. But it's all good. Hey, so, let's uh, tell me a lot of people have the misconception about the role of the Coast Guard. So what is the actual role of the Coast Guard for people out there like me who may not have been 100% certain? <laughs> so Coast Guard is unique. It's the only branch of the military that's not in DOD or Department of Defense. It's the one branch that's actually in Homeland Security. We're really driven towards law enforcement. We have, you know, we have a bunch of missions. The biggest one we have is search and rescue. That's the ability to save people's lives, essentially. And it, uh, statistically, they came out and it shows that we actually save 12 people a day. Wow. Statistically wise. Um, and it goes everything from saving people's life to saving the economy. What I mean by that is we're in charge of making sure that, you know, all the ships that come over are inspected. They all have all the proper paperwork and they have the navigation to get into ports. So all that stuff you get from Amazon at Walmart, that's <laughs> that stuff. The Coast Guard, believe it or not, is involved in to get those ships over safely into you guys. So you have that two day shipping. You got that, oh, let me click the button. Here we go, two-hour delivery. Boom, right there, Coast Guard. Nobody really knows that part. That's very cool. That's very cool. And, and so Coast Guard protecting, you know, the borders, uh, you know, going out search and rescue, helping people, checking in those cargo ships. Um, how, many, how big are these Coast Guard ships that we're talking about? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. The biggest one we have is 424 feet. 25 feet it's a national security cutter um they it's 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 interesting because there's so many small units there's so many small stations there's so many just little parts of the coast guard that uh 
a lot of people are like, oh, look at the little small boat station over there. We don't, you know what I mean? I'll give you an example. I was in Omaha, Nebraska. The whole state of Omaha, Nebraska, there was only 17 Coast Guard people. Wait, and it was me wait. on the river, the Big Muddy, the Missouri. Why, why are you – Nebraska's in the center of the country. Yeah. Well, why are we there? Yeah. The federal uh, waterways, the uh, the Mississippi, the Ohio River, the Missouri River, that's all maintained by, uh, again, Coast Guard so that the ships can navigate. And they call it AIDS navigation or uh, ATON. So anytime you see a Coast Guard ship that's black with the stripe, that's an AIDS navigation ship. They're really neat, really neat boats. So so the biggest the biggest boat is 425 feet. How many crew members would be on that? Those typically, I, I believe, don't quote me on all this stuff. You're oh, really, no, no. You're really getting me good right now. Podcast. But I it's think it's like about, Facebook. Uh, <laughs> if it's on Facebook, it's true. If it's on the <laughs> Voodoo Internet, podcast, true, right? people are like, well. <laughs> uh, I think typically they have a, I know they have a crew of over 100. I believe it's probably maybe around 100, 125 or so. Because um, they're, they're, they're brand new state of art ships. So they don't need so many people sitting there turning valves and, doing this a lot of the stuff is electronic now welcome to technology it's really the awesome is now. But, but the good news coming out is the fact that the coast guard is the only branch that actually has boats that can break ice down in the antarctica so they're they're actually coming out online here in the next couple of years with a brand new they call them polar rollers um but a but a ship that can literally take scientists down to antarctica and that's what that's one mission to coast guard a lot of people don't realize so who wants to hang out with penguins because we can do that you know what i mean you don't see navy ships down there i'm just kidding <laughs> they're probably if, down there too if, if i want to hang out with penguins i'm going to go hang out with my boy roger down at the aquarium because it's too cold down there man <laughs> too cold. all right so, so so i i I'm getting the, the gist of what we do. I, I, I really don't look, I'm still scratching my head about this Nebraska stuff. Um, <laughs> 17 people in the whole state of Nebraska. Yep. The cutter gas grenade, they call it the coast guard cutter gas grenade. It's in Omaha, Nebraska. And it's, that was one of the ships or buoy tenders. I should say that I was on. It's a barge that pushes a, um, a tender that has all the ace navigation. It's really neat, really neat setup. And I got to cook, for 17 people i had about uh five to six thousand dollars plus of a budget for uh culinary for cooking per month and it was a uh hey if you don't use it you lose it type of thing so we ate good we ate real good i'm talking we eat steaks every week lobster tails i had people getting stuff fresh ordered in i, I had all kinds of me and the meat market guy were besties because he knew when i came around the credit card was swiping <laughs> all the good stuff you know that was going to be my question the chef in a in a market with only 17 coasties that's got to be pretty fun that's like cooking for just a big family oh yeah it's it and it was awesome about it was when i did cook i did cook family style i put them on big platters and just filled the platters full of you know uh scallops shrimp beef all every type of protein you can think of with some you know carbohydrate you know, you know the rice and the potatoes and they get their carbs in the vegetables and the salad well, and the desserts you, so you, you do know the five food groups of the voodoo chef do you not um <laughs> educate me butter bacon caffeine carbs uh -oh. and bourbon so oh. i just want to know can you cook for me <laughs> yeah i could definitely throw it out hey anybody can cook but you have to have the technique to give the flavor there you go so so you're on a ship you're in the middle of nowhere you're you're on this little whatever cooking for 17 people that's got to be the primo gig oh what yeah about, what about the guy on that 425 uh foot boat cooking for the 125 folks uh does he have a crew with him is he flying solo no, no, he has he has a team of probably I believe again. Don't quote me any of those. No, but, no, please, um, please. probably eight, eight to maybe ten coasty chefs, everywhere from somebody that's been in the Coast Guard for probably fifteen plus years, all that runs the galley. They call them food service officers, all the way down to the they call them duty cooks, which is it, it, in reality that's kind of like a line chef. Well, line is that is that basically time served and you pro promote from within? Just like oh, yeah, absolutely. Every six months, you can take a test, 
and move forward. And we, we use the same material that the civilians use, you know, the commercial world use as far as, you know, the knowledge piece, the, the Grissom book and all that stuff. So well, it's pretty it's, it's, it sounds like just, you know, basic math and, you know, it's the Voodoo Chef podcast. We're not holding anybody to anything. Um, <laughs> you're cook the chef, the chef, if I'm a culinary specialist in the Coast Guard, mm. I'm cooking for like 20 people. It, it sounds like even on that big boat, it, on the big boat, it sounds more like one to 10, one to 15. Um, but that's not a bad usually, thing. Usually you'll have, you'll have, you'll have a team of two cooking for 120 people. Um, usually you knock out the products together and then you obviously you have the support behind you. Right. Cause some of the other team members, they do things like the inventory ordering, the breakouts, the preps that get done. Another team member makes sure that we, you know, the books are on order. The other one, you know, make sure that we have all the tools that we need. So it's, it's a big team, but everybody plays their part. It's pretty interesting to say the least. It's like a weld oil machine at the end of the day. Man, so, that, that is super cool. So tell me, you know, how long have you been in the Coast Guard now? 16 years. Oh, dude, you look like you're about, what, 30 years old, tops? Whoa, man, I got that found of youth, Ponce de Leon, Florida. <laughs> you haven't found that yet? I found it, but not Ponce de Leon. <laughs> um, so uh, tell me. You've been, in, you've been in quite some time, so that means you've probably seen a whole bunch of our country. Tell me some of the coolest places uh, as a Coast Guard culinary specialist you've seen. Of the United States? Uh, or have you gone out of the country? Oh, yeah. Can, can we, I, we go everywhere. Um, so in United, I'll start with the United States, and sure. I'll, I'll transition into the other uh, awesome uh, places we, we go to. Um, so I, I was able, I was afforded the opportunity to drive cross country. Literally, I grew up in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale. So I was able to, when I got my, um, I got picked up to go to culinary school when I chose that job because I had the ability to do so. I finally drove from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, all the way to Petaluma, California, which if you don't know where that is, it's about an hour north of San Francisco. That's where the, you know, the uh, two rock, um, culinary institute is it looks like a castle it's amazing um all the fresh organic farms the whole nine yards that's out there petaluma creamery is a big one that a lot of people know about um it's an amazing place to go out there and learn the the basics in the real the the depth and the culture and the whole nine yards when it goes behind culinary because that part of uh california is real big in the dairy cows there's a lot of jersey cows running around and a lot of milk and stuff like that. And it, they just roam the hills. It's all hilly and everything. Um, but that was an awesome because I saw Hoover Dam. I was in Las Vegas for a few days. Um, what all kinds made of you stuff. drive? Because I had all my stuff. I was, I was 19 years old at the time. I had all my stuff. And I, and I, I made a – I was like the wild man, you know. I had my motorcycle in the back of my truck. Everything I ever owned from my mama's house. And I was spitting sunflower seeds out the window – driving down I-10 all the way until I got to the 101 and did the historical uh, drive up the coast of California. Love and, love and life. Love and life. And Coast Guard paid every penny of that trip. So, so how long was culinary school? Culinary school is about three and a half months. So they, they take you guys, all the students, back through all the basics again. There's numerous different instructors there, uh, civilian and Coast Guard, that have, again, what's really neat about the Coast Guard is they – hire their enlisted people to go back and train and help the people progress that are brand new to come that come through that school and everything very cool um, you get to cook up upper galley you have two different galleys they call them galleys or kitchens so we call them galleys in the coast guard but you have the upper galley you learn your base it's on the top of a hill looking over the entire base it's amazing and then the lower galley is where you really start honing in your skills and you cook for the entire base which um, which are class and obviously in the instructors and everything like that, which is really neat because you're cooking for uh, at any given time, I think a couple thousand people. So it's a lot of, cool. it's, it, it seems weird, but it's actually really cool because they give you one product and they say, here you go, convert it. You got to cook these many portions, boom, go. So it's, it, you really start getting the techniques and stuff. And obviously you're going to goof up every once in a while. Cause that's what cooking is. And, uh, but you have a strong team of instructors and in, uh, in, in civilian instructors and in the whole nine yards there. It's, it's our flagship galley in the entire Coast Guard, and it's amazing. Uh, trial by fire, man. It's the only way to do it. 
Well, the great thing about that is you can you have the money to do that type of stuff too when you're at your unit. So, oops, I burnt the chicken. I guess I got to go buy some more. Glad we got a couple thousand dollars laying around to go get it. So, or you can just give it to the person you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I got to believe that the personalities are going to conflict at time. Uh, but it's like anything else. You guys are working together to do a job. And uh, I'm sure that it's more of a family than, than it not. is. A hundred percent family because it's, it, it affords the opportunity to get really close with people. And obviously everybody knows food brings people together. And, and as a culinary chef in the coast guard, that is, that is your main goal is to bring people together, change the mood. They call it the morale, change the morale because you can singly handily destroy morale with a horrible dinner. I'll give you an example. One time I didn't know how to cook yams at all, period. So I'm cooking yams, and I'm just like, I think you just heat them up, right? Pour a little salt, maybe some pepper on there. Oh, no. Oh, no. I got I, – I, I always got it thrown back in my face. They're like, this tastes like baby food. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't understand. I've never cooked it before. But then from that day on out, I know how to cook yams. Now, I That's got scooped up real quick. I was That's like, maybe a little terrible. butter next time. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, one, one – you know – you were show, we were sharing pictures and hanging out and doing, you know, doing what chefs do. You know, it's like we're showing pictures of our kids. We're showing pictures of our food, though. Uh, one picture you showed me, you're on your, your ship. You've got, it's got to be at least an extra large BGE, big green egg for all you non-eggers out there. Oh, yeah. And you're on your ship. You've got your extra large BGE on your ship, in your galley. And we well, got on top the, of the deck on top of the deck and we've got the background we've got Key Biscayne as you're pulling out of port man that was like phenomenal how do you get away with stuff like that it's the best kept secret coast guard a lot of people don't realize it it's uh you know it's such a, a phenomenal opportunity just to get in and and see all that type of stuff and it's like some people you know they they grow up with that type of stuff but i mean the coast guard affords you that opportunity no no way in a million years I would be in Omaha, Nebraska, on a ship on the river. I don't even know where the Missouri River was or it even existed <laughs> in the beginning. But the coolest thing about that place was in springtime, we would go on the hunt for the elusive mushroom, the morale or moral, depending on whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? $35 yeah. an ounce? That's crazy. We used to go walk up and down the riverbed on, uh, you know, there in the springtime after they had the heavy rains and find fields of them everywhere. Oh my God. I found one probably about that big hole just coming out of the ground. And we used to eat them up. We put flashlights on. It was amazing times. It was awesome. The stuff that you wouldn't probably get to do had you not been in the Coast Guard and getting to travel the world like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, the world, traveling the world too. A lot of people are like the misconception about the Coast Guard is we don't travel. Me? And I'm like, that's, yeah. Hey, tell I'm me like, about your international travel. Been everywhere, everywhere. Central America, South America. We've been to uh, Colombia mo multiple times. That was an unbelievable place. Dominican Republic, all the islands, a lot of French islands. I didn't even know were French. They're in the, uh, you know what I mean. It's just the Caribbean, the Bahamas, Jamaica, you name it. It's like a Beach Boys song, you know, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna take them back to the '60s. And and all of this as part of your coast guard duty not like special assignment or anything just part of what we normally do just be on a jump jump on a ship and go um, so, so what would we what would the coast guard be doing down in the bahamas they do a ton a ton of drug enforcement migrants as well helping um search and rescue migrants i mean you any pretty much any mission of the coast guard is at any time can be performed by pretty much every unit um, it's pretty neat how that is. And what's cool too, they don't, it's no tunnel vision. So it's not like, Oh, you're just a culinary specialist. So all you can do is cook. I did a ton of other stuff. So it was interesting to see, uh, that you're not just one, one sided, I guess you can say like, there's a lot of stuff that opens up. And then of course that opens up your experience and skill set, and your resume it looks amazing. Well, they see coast guard, of course. And they're like, yes, please. Coolest thing you got to do in the Coast Guard? Oh, the coolest thing. I mean, it, it's so hard to narrow it down, but at the end of the day, looking back at it, the coolest thing was being a part of crew.
that helped and saved people. That was it, really. I mean, I did a lot of cool things, go to port calls, meet a lot of cool buddies from all parts of the world and in the countries and been to a ton of different places. But I think the stuff that really resonates with you is the fact that you have the capability of being part of a crew that can save people. And there's nothing better than that whatsoever. That, you know, that's, that's amazing, dude. That's amazing. And I don't, uh, I have, I haven't experienced that. And most of the people in the, in the world probably haven't experienced that. So I can only imagine what you're talking about and how great that would feel. And, and that, it just makes me all warm and tingly, man. I mean, yeah, that's it's, super it's cool. a good thing. I, I mean, I didn't know what I was signing up for back in the day, but I grew up real quick. You were signing up to cook and then you got, oh, I didn't know I wanted to cook. That's the thing. I didn't know I wanted to cook at first and I got, I didn't have any, any clue what cooking was. And uh, remember I was telling you the joke about the ramen noodles. If yeah. I could be your friend, that's about as much knowledge I had of cooking. <laughs> and it, <laughs> I was horrible, horrible, uh, horrible culinary experience. I never took culinary there. I was never afforded the opportunity because we didn't have those programs back in, that, in those, those days. Those were like home ec type classes. Right. So there was no real culinary programs like we have nowadays. I'm kind of jealous of these young adults coming through the school systems because I go to all the culinary programs and I see what they're working with. And I'm like, like, holy smokes, it's awesome that these kids really get exposed to it because if there's passion there, it, they're going to go for it and they're going to make it happen. And that's the next person that when you go to that phenomenal restaurant, they're going to be the ones in the back. And, uh, you, you know, you won't even know it, but they're the ones that making that phenomenal food for you. So and that's a great thing that, you know, great service that you do as well as other culinary teachers do as well. So it's pretty an awesome thing. Well, that's kind of you, but, uh, you know, you said something pretty profound when you were in our program the other day, you know, you know, teaching high school for, for 20 years, like I did, uh, you know, my brother being a career recruiter for the Navy, uh, we've seen a lot of recruiters. I, you know, I joke a lot of the lingo, a lot of the games recruiters play to kind of get people. You came in and you sold the passion of food. You sold the opportunities of the Coast Guard and that was it. And when we started talking about benefits and all the other stuff, you made it real simple. You said, if you have the passion, it doesn't matter where you go to work. You need to follow your passion. And if you want to cook, I can get you set up to be a cook in the Coast Guard. And if you want to cook and you want to follow that passion, my benefits are going to outweigh the others. But, but that's not worth talking about if you don't have the passion to do the job. And that is such a true statement. And, and I respect you for saying that. Um, you know, because you first have to want to, to do whatever it is. You have to have that passion to want to be a chef, to want to be an electrician, to want to be a welder. And if you have that passion, then you can start finding out where you want to apply your trade. And then, you know, of course, you went through all the benefits, the, you know, the, the, the medical, the housing, everything, the continued education. And, you know, we know the phenomenal uh, opportunities that come for our veterans and rightfully so. But the fact that you were talking about following that passion is what's going to make you successful. You know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, yeah, it's, they, I mean, the they, dollar, it's chasing a dream. They, yeah. They, I mean, a lot of people don't realize how much potential they have until somebody either exposes them to it or they tap into it themselves. Unfortunately, as humans, we're all flawed. We can't, you know, we don't understand it. We have a lot of people that have that natural leadership ability and it just seeps through their veins. And I'm so jelly of them, but some of us have to make up for that type of stuff. But obviously we have strong points at the end. So, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a passion and, you know, the goals that you can get and it feels easy. Obviously everybody would do it. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, 100% the greatest thing about the Coast Guard, and I can't say it enough, is the fact that they might tell you no once or twice, but majority of the time, I would say about 90% of the time, they're going to give you a yes, go for it. Keep driving, keep moving, keep going forward. And there's nobody that's going to stop you but yourself. And that's the coolest thing about the organization because at the end of the day, food, as you know, there is no boundary. There is no, hey, here you go. Here's the line in the sand. Here's the 
here's the circle. You can't go outside of it. The food, you can do all kinds of unique, crazy things that people turn their heads sideways. And you're like, what the heck did that guy just do? And then you taste it. And you're like, whoa, this is unbelievable. I mean, shoot, who has the best network uh, ratings right now on Netflix? All the food shows. You know what I mean? Because people love it. it. It speaks. It speaks to them. Who's your favorite so. chef? <laughs> you are, of course. Duh. Come on oh, now. Was like, that a trick question? <laughs> no, no trick questions here. Uh, not with not with this. But uh, I, I do got to tell you. You know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, I always wear a bandana, and and I mean, it, look, it's 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 good, covering look, up the good. It's covering up what, the good stuff. What what's Just going don't. on up here? We've been talking about it for two weeks, uh, but I'm gonna put this on park. Um, I wear very few hats, but uh, I love a good one right there. I love this hat that you gave me, man. It's got the right fit. It's got it's got the right logo right there. Followed by too. that right there. Uh, you know, I, I just absolutely love this hat. And, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Nine times out of ten, it'll be this way. <laughs> but that's all right, too, because look at that right there. <laughs> this is awesome, bro. This yeah. is awesome. I can't thank you enough. Yeah, definitely. Um, on multiple levels uh, for doing what you do for, for this badass hat. And, uh, you know, the love of wanting to help continue the education of students uh, in the culinary field, outside the culinary field, whatever it is, uh, everybody knows I use culinary to motivate students just to continue their education. And it's that's what you're doing. Continue your path, continue your career. And uh, dude, I think you're a rock star, man. I'm glad we connected. Yeah, and the greatest thing about it too is if, if culinary is not their thing, there's so many other programs that they can do in the Coast Guard. How many jobs in the Coast Guard? Oh man, you just put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's at least five, it, right? It has it has every single job for every single passion that somebody will want to get into. Put it that and, way, and and I'll let it I'll let it out the part where he said, "Oh my God, you put me on the spot." <laughs> <laughs> well, when I send this up to the the big guys, they're gonna be like, "What? You don't know that?" Oh, of course, the only you thing know. I know is culinary. That's all I know, right? No, I'm just hey, kidding. on this podcast, it's all that matters. Yeah, pretty much. And, Except for pointless pop culture trivia. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Oh, you're in trouble, lose. my friend. Can't wait to lose. <laughs> Get ready for a little pointless pop culture trivia because it's coming. But before that, man, uh, you know, you never once said your rank in my, in my presence. Uh, you never once uh, flaunted anything. You're a very humble man, uh, but definitely a very skilled, talented man. Uh, you are a chief in the United States Coast Guard, and thank you for that, my friend. Uh, with all the gratitude from all the booties, thank you for doing what you do. Awesome. Appreciate that. Now it's time for a little pointless pop culture trivia. Oh, wait. We we forgot the best part at the end of the podcast. What's that? What's the Coast Guard giving sh aspiring chefs to join? How much bonus? Oh, ho, ho, ho. they don't want to know about that. All right. So, so you're right. Dude, I forget this every week. I get so enamored by all the stories. I always forget the business aspect of this. And I always <laughs> have to model. throw it out to people. All right, first and foremost, how can we get a hold of you if we have an interest in the Coast Guard? Um, you can give me a call. Um, I can, I, you know, on the post, we can uh, put up my number as well as the uh, St. Uh, Petersburg office. I'm is, is there a website? Is there a basic website that can direct There is a GoCoastGuard.com is a basic website. GoCoastGuard.com. You, you won't be able to get to me. As, this is worldwide, homie. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Well, so the whole, well, anybody, com, and yep. then it can we can direct to the wherever we're at. Yeah, they'll they'll the uh, Coast Guard headquarters will help you get your nearest recruiter for culinary or but whatever. Definitely, definitely make sure you tell them Chief Rupp sent you and the Voodoo Chef. <laughs> All right, and go, so, get, and go get your forty thousand dollar bonus too, right? Exactly. Let's talk about that because that's just like phenomenal. If I were to join the Coast Guard in the field of culinary, mm -hmm. there's a signing bonus. And there's you correct different ones. The lowest amount? So with no experience, no culinary, just come right off the streets, and you just have a passion to cook, that's a $20,000 bonus all day. $20,000. Yeah. If you have a certificate from a high school that you went through culinary, you took some culinary classes, and you, you completed the program, $30,000. So all my booties out there, 
If you're in one of the high school pro star programs across the nation, if you're in a high school program that's doing any of the other curriculums, simply get that certificate saying you're a completer, hit up your Coasty station. It's a $30,000 signing bonus. So all these people that tell you, oh, what's culinary going to do for you? Why are you taking culinary in high school? $30,000. That's why. Make sure, you complete, make sure you complete. Make sure you get your certificate. You're going to sign up for the Coast Guard. You're going to have a lifetime of knowledge, security, plus a $30,000 signing bonus. No, but wait, there's more. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> this last is one. what I want. The last, the last one is if you do go through an accredited program and you have an AA in any type of culinary or hospitality business management, $40,000, boom. $40,000. So it's pretty good. much if you boil it down, it's extra $10,000 a year you're paying yourself. That's insane. So you go, you go, through, uh, you go through a culinary program, um, you graduate, you get that college, college credit. $40,000 signing bonus. Now, I know what you're saying. Uh, you know, $40,000 over 20 years because that's a normal military life. You're signing a six-year commitment, right? Four. A four-year commitment, and you're getting $40,000. Holy cow. That's amazing. So I'll give you an example. I had a girl that wanted to join the Coast Guard, and I told her about culinary. She wanted to come in. She wanted to open up her own uh, bakery or uh, – food truck, I believe. I can't yeah. remember. And she took that bonus money and was going to apply it towards capital. So when she got done four years, save up all her money, she would have zero loans or debt. So that way she can open up that food truck. That's because that was her whole goal. And exactly. she was going to use the Coast Guard as a stepping stone, but get all the skills. But I guarantee you, she'll probably stay in the Coast Guard because we have 96% retention rate. It's crazy. Holy cow. Mm. But, but even if she were to get out after that time, uh, not only is she going to get the $40,000 signing bonus she have, she's also going to get uh, small business assistance. She's going to get continued oh, education yeah. assistance, everything that vets get and deserve. And she's just going to be rock star killing it, man. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, and a phenomenal everything. I mean, at the end of the day, they have, you have to take a hard look into it. You're passionate about it. We'll get you there. We'll get it done, and you'll, you'll see what it opens up, how it, how it helps out. And the only way to do that is to make the contact and start asking questions. And if, if you're here local in Tampa Bay market, make sure you hit up Chef Rupp, uh, Chief Chef Rupp, Chef Chief Rupp. You, <laughs> do, just, I, you do you. Tone twister. Hey, we got to finish with a dad joke. Okay, give me a dad joke. Can we do the culinary one or the Coast Guard one? How about how about do do the culinary one? Culinary one? Yeah. You want to? Um, did you hear the rumor about the butter? No. I don't want to spread it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should do the maybe we should do the Coast Guard one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that one too if you want. All right, hold on. Ready? Watch this. Uh, let's go with the Coast Guard one. <laughs> um. Why couldn't the uh, lifeguard save the hippie? Why couldn't the lifeguard? I don't know. He was too far out, man. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely dad jokes, man. Uh, you're going to have to open up your own TikTok. Addicted oh. to TikTok. Addicted to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. man. Go ahead. You got something? No, I was just saying, oh, yeah, we're on, we're on the Instagram and, uh, and, and Facebook. If you go GoCoastGuard.com if you guys want to check out more as well make make sure you guys hit that up man but uh uh chef i got to tell you right now it's time for a little pointless pop culture trivia <laughs> okay. you've been trying to avoid it checking little... in from iowa we've got the iowa farmers association what's going on ifa hey sorry if i'm late oh you are right on time i mean you know we got do have that time change and checking in all the way from I don't know, about an hour away. Uh, Chef Carl Miller. Chef, what's going on, buddy? What's up? <laughs> uh, where officially would we say you live? Trinity North? <laughs> <laughs> Georgia South? Same, same. <laughs> same, same. Uh, uh, Iowa Farmers Association, uh, I, I checked in with you, uh, I think it was yesterday. 
four yeah. foot snow banks on the side of the drive. What's up with that, man? It's melting. It'll be gone by Saturday. It's have melting. You been, have you been locked? It was in fifty the house? today. Have you been locked in the house? No. No. I like it. I like it. Carl, what's going on, man? You're in the sunroom. <laughs> yeah, studio lighting. Studio lighting. You look kind of tired, man. Are you doing a lot of catering? What's going on? Uh, just uh, no, 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 just doing double duty. Doing double. So, hey, yeah. we're glad you're here. And uh, make sure everybody check out uh, Chef Carl at Silver and Smoke 11. Correct, my friend? Yes, sir. Uh, guys, this is uh, just a rock star of an individual, not just a culinarian, but also a chief in the United States Coast Guard, Chef Rupp. Uh, Chef is here to, he says he's going to get killed in pointless pop culture trivia. Uh, <laughs> Carl, we're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yes. And we're absent a big Eddie C, so everybody's going to have to keep their own score tonight because we all oh. suck with numbers. All right, so uh, as always, well, not as always, we're paying a little respect to our military, military partners today. Uh, if you know the answer, simply shout out your name. The only rule tonight is don't cheat. Don't cheat. If you know the answer, simply shout out your own name. Uh, Big Eddie C's not here, so I'm going to try my best. <laughs> We're in trouble. And uh, you will have the opportunity to answer the question. And if you are correct, you will receive the point. If not, the next person to shout out their name will have the opportunity to answer the question. And as always, the winner of tonight's Pointless Pop Culture Trivia will be given the opportunity to have their name entered into a drawing where they may be selected the winner of a prize that could be named at a later date. So if you are ready, question number one. And I think the chief has his wife next to him to feed him answers. I'm not trying to call him <laughs> out. I'm not trying to call him out. She is over there looking at me like, I'm going to probably win this. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm and, over here because I already put my pajamas on and I didn't want anybody to see on the video as I walked by. Oh, just make, sure, just make sure you're the winner. <laughs> Question number one. Created by author P.L. Travers, who is the magical nanny that travels by umbrella? Iowa. Oh. IFA's in first. Mary Poppins? Mary Poppins is oh, correct. Is Mary Poppins is correct. She lives next door right now. She's retired. <laughs> <laughs> she retired to Iowa. Is that um, right next to the, the Field of Dreams, right? That's right. <laughs> if, you, if you build it, that will come. Question number two. Bonjour is a greeting in what language? Uh, Rupp, Coast Guard. Rupp is in. Uh, French. French is correct. It's all that culinary training. Oh, I know, from Nucky. My, my French, Andre. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> hey, did you know <laughs> Chef Michelle? Rupp, did you know Chef Michelle? Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Oh, man. I love heck. I love that man. <laughs> He's a great man. Yeah. Um, very, very wonderful man. He's the one that the juice has left the building. <laughs> I'm not going to ask what he was talking about. <laughs> Question number three. Around Christmas time, what charity volunteers bring a bell to solicit donations from oh, a oh, bro. Carl is in. Salvation Army. The Salvation Army. I believe we have a three-way tie. After three questions, it is a dead heat. Question number four. Traditionally, it takes how many strikes until you are out in an old Rupp. ball game? Rubs in. Three. Three strikes and you're out in baseball, says the softball coach. I was wondering if Iowa was going to come through with that one. IFA. I was waiting for something like, like a different sport. You were waiting for the, you were waiting for the swerve? Yeah. Got to be Semper P. Got to be it's ready. Something it's else, yeah. The swerve comes quite often, but you got to remember he's IFA, Iowa Farmers Association. He does not manage the Field of Dreams Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Question. That's on the other side of the state. Exactly. Exactly. You know, you got to you got to know your Iowa. Geography. Where all the corn is, right? 
<laughs> oh, there's corn everywhere. <laughs> I know. I was in Nebraska. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stationed in Nebraska with 17 Coasties. Usually and we what, try to keep the what Iowans. coast is in Nebraska? Oh, we had two of them. We had the Iowa coast and the Nebraska coast. We always try to keep the Iowans out of the Nebraska. That's kind of our <laughs> So you were sailing up and down the Missouri? The big money. <laughs> yep. Didn't even know it existed. <laughs> Until 2017. What a what a wonderful place. Wonder why they call it flyover states. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question enough of the, the slamming of the Midwest. Question number five. For a New York musical to be considered on Broadway. The theater must have how many seats? Rupp. Iowa. Rupp's in. 250. Rupp is incorrect. Dang it. Iowa. Iowa's in. 50. 50 is incorrect. It's a free guess there, Carl. 100. Carl says 100. The correct answer is 500. Holy cow. That's what I said, because I've been to shows, and I thought the theaters were small. They really cram them in, I guess. Wow. Or I'm just, or I'm, or I'm just fat. <laughs> Question number six. I don't know who's winning. Rupp's winning. Like two or three, I can't remember. Rupp is winning. He has two. Everybody else has one. We're on question number six. And... Uh, uh, We'll see who gets this one if they're going to be brave enough to answer it out loud. In the Crayola crayon box, mahogany, beaver, and chestnut are all hues of what color? Iowa. I was in. Um, I'm going to say brown. Brown it is. Brown it is. But in, in the Spanish language, there's no word for brown. The color doesn't exist. It doesn't. No, they call it marron, which is maroon. Oh. Isn't that a cookie? Which is red. <laughs> I, I got a lot of jokes, but I have to play nice today, so we'll just move on. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know my primary colors anyway, so you would have won. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, because brown's not a primary, but that's okay. I've never <laughs> seen a brown rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I got, again, lots of jokes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they call that the Missouri River. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why and that's why he moved to the base at Key Biscayne. <laughs> pretty much. I needed some sunshine and vitamin C. Question number seven. Oh, yeah. On the New York Stock Exchange, what company symbol is simply the letter K? Iowa. I was in. Kellogg's. Kellogg it is. He has taken the lead. Three to two to one. Carl, there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I did you like that? Did you like that laugh of Carl? He's like, ha 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 ha. ha. Look at my logo. Look at my logo. <laughs> <laughs> Product placement. Product placement. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And uh we're moving on to a gambling question, so uh, you might have a shot here. Ooh. To get a blackjack in the game of blackjack, you must be dealt a 10 or a face card, plus what other card? Carl. Carl's in. Ace. Ace. All the time at the casino. <laughs> Three to two to two. Moving on to question number nine. Question number niner. Comedy writer Larry David plays uh -oh. comedy writer Larry David on what HBO series? The Larry David Show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll accept that answer, but that is incorrect. <laughs> what was the question? Comedy writer Larry David plays comedy writer Larry David on what HBO series? Hey, I know we're having so much fun on Pointless Pop Culture Trivia. Please try to curb your enthusiasm just a bit. Is that the show? 
Rupp, Curb Rupp your, whatever. Um, yeah. Rupp's in. <laughs> Cur curb your, uh, whatever you said. That one. That's incorrect. <laughs> Dang it. Friends. Oh. Uh, go with friends. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are still at a three to two to two game, and we are on question number 10. Three questions. Of, I don't know. I never know. Where, where's Ed? Where's Ed? Question number 10. Upon completion of what structure in our national capital, uh, upon completion of this structure in our national capital, it measured just over 555 feet oh. tall. Rough, Washington, call in? Washington Monument. The Washington Monument. Three to three to two. Three to three to two. Great answer. Uh, and, and and what river were we protecting in Washington? Well, I think that's the Delaware. The Potomac? Yeah, Potomac. I don't like that. One of those. Never One go of those. that way. One of those. I just go. I just go. I've only did, been to D.C. once. One of my favorite places. I wanted to reenact the uh, Forrest Gump scene where Jenny runs through the water. But then I saw it didn't look like the movies. It was pretty green. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you got to come on every week. <laughs> Apparently, was, the Ducks had something to do with that, so whatever. But maybe one day we can figure that out. All right. I totally don't know what the score is. Is Rob back in the lead, four to three to two? I think we're three up. Me and Iowa. Oh, I think you took the lead with that one, for reals. Because you got the Washington Monument. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah. I don't know. I'll trust you over me because it's not. 3-3-2. 3-3-2. Three, 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 I know three, I'm last. 3-3-2. Three, three, Carl, there's still a chance. <laughs> if your doctor tells you you suffer from anosmia, which of your senses is most diminished? Carl. Carl's in. Smell. Smell is correct. If you have anosmia, you may have the vid. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You're, you've never been saying. exposed to this. You can call this 1-800 number. Be, be beware, go. beware of the Rona. Do we have a three-way tie? Three piece. Oh, this is scary. Question number 12. What colorful hmm. bird is the name of NBC's new streaming service? Carl. Oh, I got uh, Carl first. Peacock. Peacock is correct. Peacock <laughs> is correct. Redo. Carl, redo. Carl is <laughs> taking the lead. I got to tell you, though, Rupp, you thought you were going to get it handed to you. You're, you're faring pretty well. <laughs> well, I got to show up the first yeah. time. Do you have an earpiece in? Wait, wait. As I said, you have an ear right over there. Did you look? His eyes went up to his wife. It's just off screen. <laughs> not that we know. Hey, Russ, no, not that we know, that. but if you're going to have your wife right there cheating, you shouldn't have no. that mirror right behind you where we could see her. I saw her where? enjoy him crashing and burning. <laughs> <laughs> Super supportive, like usual. <laughs> All right, last question, which will take us either to a win or a tie with no tiebreaker. Uh, Humble Pie is the iconic title of the memoir of what temperamental celebrity chef? Rub. Rub's in. Is it that? What's that guy with the, the highlighted guy. tips? Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri is not correct. Dang it. Carl. Pie, Carl's in for the win. Ramsey. Gordon Ramsey for the win. Carl from Silver and Smoke. Wow. Silver and Smoke 11 on all your social media has won pointless pop culture trivia. And for that, you will have the right to have your name entered into a drawing where you may be selected the winner of a prize that may or may not be named at a later date. Congratulations, my friend. It's been a while. I know. Had to, had yeah. to come back. Had to come back. <laughs> Got to come back. Got to come back. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Sam. <laughs> oh, Sam's going to be so mad. Ed wasn't here, and Carl won, so he's going to be, like, really pissed. <laughs> hey, guys, 
I can't thank you guys enough for coming into the Voodoo Chef podcast. As always, uh, thanks for playing a little pointless pop culture trivia. See you next time. There you have it, booties. Another episode of the Voodoo Chef podcast. Let's give a big shout out to everyone involved with Voodoo Chef and all things voodoo, starting with Wustoff Knives, the official knife of the Voodoo Chef. And jamming up and down the streets of all Ybor City and Tampa Bay, ragged old souls. Thanks for letting me jam with you guys. And when those amps are cranking, the turntables are definitely spinning, thanks to the official DJ of the Voodoo Chef, DJ Don Pablo. Check him out spinning all across town, most importantly, at all Voodoo Chef events. Speaking of events, getting ready for yours? Check out Voodoo Chef Catering, custom-created events for every shape and size. Log on to VoodooChefCatering.com to get your information today. A great big shout-out to all my booties that are in the Voodoo crew. Thank you for your support. And, of course... We could not do what we do in the crew without all of our crew sponsors. First Watch, Chef Shane Shibley, thank you for believing in our mission. And of course, we can't forget Voodoo Mortgage. For all your mortgage needs, check them out at VoodooMortgage.com. Alessi Bakery, a Tampa staple. Drop in and check them out today. And our newest sponsor, Twisted South Food Truck. Chef Adam Jessup, thank you for what you do. And of course, all things voodoo are in support of the Voodoo Chef Foundation, providing culinary scholarship and feeding those in need. To find out more information or make a donation yourself, log on to VoodooChefFoundation.com today.